So it's great to welcome you to worship. The sun's out. The ice cream's all right. But it's good to see you. There'll be no Zoom today. Dawn and I are away, seeing Darren and Lynn and the children. First time since December 2019. So you can imagine we're really looking forward to that. Don't know what Scunthorpe ice cream will be like. But lots going on. Hey, Race of the Stones, 10th of July. If you want to sponsor Hayley and I, 62 miles non-stop. That would be fantastic. Community Street Cafe is Friday the 9th. We're really looking forward to that. Weather like this would be good, but there won't be any ice cream. We're really grateful to God, aren't we, for our prayers and our support for one another. I'm pleased to say Sylvia has shown some improvement. And so we continue to remember Sylvia in our prayers, 16, 17 weeks in hospital, long time. So continue to pray for Sylvia and all those other people we promised to pray for. Our worship this week is led by Majors Kath and Granville. Let's enjoy. Well, good morning. It's great to greet you on what has been called the National Thank You Day. It's a day that's been set aside simply for all of us, for the whole country, in fact, to say thank you to one another. We will be watching shortly a video clip of some people saying thank you in their own ways for something that's been shared or performed or an act of kindness in some way. We too need to think about those that we may want to say thank you to from the bottom of our hearts. It could be a family member, a friend or a work colleague, a neighbour or someone who served you in a cafe or someone in the supermarket. It could be someone who's given you medical assistance or maybe a school teacher or other key worker. Of course, you may just have an extremely grateful heart this morning. And so right after the video, we will be singing, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. This last year has been difficult for every one of us. But the end of lockdown is finally in sight. From the beginning, we've been helping each other through. As families, streets and communities. The crisis has reminded us that when it really matters, we are here for one another. So one of the few good things to come out of all of this is that we each have lots of people to say thank you to. I would like to say thank you to our little daughter Lyra, who has spent most of her life in lockdown. All the hard-working staff within our acute services, like the hospitals. The person who's been caring for my mother over the last year, she's just been so generous. My next-door neighbours, Pam and Derek, who have been there for me every single day. I'm thankful to and for all the people who have supported theatre. That's why we, that's me, and me, are calling for Sunday the 4th of July to be thank you day. Whatever we do, and however we do it, we want to say thank you to everyone who helped us through. So please pass this on and show your support. Let's make Sunday the 4th of July the biggest thank you party ever. Together. Together. Yeah, thank you day.
Let's pray together. Lord, we do come before you today with grateful hearts. We praise you for your goodness to us and the way that you have sustained us and helped us during the months of pandemic. On this special day, this Thank You Sunday, we thank you for all people in our lives. We thank you for our families and for their love, for our neighbours who have helped us and for our friends who have supported us. We especially say thank you for the staff in hospitals and care homes and for all the key workers who have made such a difference. We also remember our Salvation Army family and for all the ways in which we have been able to help one another. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 17 and the first 24 verses, and I'm reading from the Good News Bible. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kereth ravine east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kereth ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Some time later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, he saw a widow 
there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replies, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the Lord gives rain on the land. So she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and for her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, What do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed. There he cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, have you brought tragedy upon the widow whom I am living with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried to the Lord, O oh Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. Then the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Amen.
Are you ready for Bible tale time? Today, I'm going to tell you the story about a widow. A widow is a woman who has lost her husband. This widow lives in the town of Zarephath, and she has a son. In her town, it hadn't rained in a long time. Even the stream nearby had dried up. And because of that, a lot of people in the town had no food to eat. One day, with her stomach growling with hunger, the widow went out to gather sticks. She wanted to start a fire so that she could bake one last loaf of bread with what little flour and oil she had left so that she and her son could eat one last meal and die. As the widow passed through the town gate, a stranger called and asked her for some water. When she was going to get the water, the stranger asked her to bring him a bit of bread too. The widow was shocked. She might have been thinking, didn't you realize that there was no food? Am I supposed to share what little I had left with a stranger? The widow then replied to the stranger saying that she doesn't have any bread. All she had left was a little amount of flour and olive oil. The hungry widow didn't know that the stranger was Elijah, who is God's prophet. And the widow was chosen to help Elijah to survive the famine. God's prophet is a man chosen by God to help the people communicate with God before Jesus came. The widow didn't know what to do because she only had enough left for one last meal for herself and her son. Elijah told the widow not to worry and to go make bread for him first. Elijah assured her that God promised that there will be more than enough until God sends rain. While she was walking to her house, a thousand questions must be running through her mind. The flour and the oil will not run out, but who will fill it? Should I really share the last bread I have with him? Will God really provide? After making the bread for Elijah, she peeked into her jar and she was shocked. There was more flour. Then she peeked into her jug and there was more oil. And every day after that, there was enough flour and oil just as what God told Elijah. Sometimes, it is hard to share what we have, especially when we don't have enough. The widow was afraid to share her last meal with Elijah, but she did it anyway and God blessed her. You can be kind just like the widow too. Let's learn to be kind and generous by sharing and being a blessing to the people around us. Did you like that story? If you did, remember to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Also, let us know in the comment section what kind of video you would like to watch. Till next time, bye!
Last Monday morning at 8 a.m., I accompanied Fred Alston as he took a step of faith and returned to his seat outside of Sainsbury's there in Bitton Precinct to um, recommence selling the war cry and kids alive. It's been 15 months now since he was able to do that and some things are still a bit different with COVID restrictions that are still in place. At the moment, we must travel there with the car windows partly open. Fred must wear a face shield and use a table to aid social distancing. Well, with a friendly greeting from the store manager, Fred settled down to begin his task. And I just wondered what the response was going to be like after such a long break. Of course, I need not have been concerned as the very first person to approach him uh, took out their wallet and pushed a £10 note into Fred's collecting box. And as I witnessed that moment, it just seemed to me that God was blessing Fred's step of faith. Faith to go back and do what he loves doing. As we return to the story of Elijah again this week, we see this prophet facing a time of drought and famine in his country. But this gives him a new opportunity to step out in faith as well. And more than that, to encourage another person to step out in faith as well. He experiences God's provision for him in a most extraordinary way. The Lord told him, leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerith ravine east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered ravens to feed you there. It's very unusual, you might say, but Elijah had to trust that God knew that there'd be water in this brook in the Kerith ravine. He also had to trust that ravens were going to bring bread and meat to him in that place. You see, Elijah believed that God could do it. And so he made the trip to Kerith, found the stream with water, and was supplied with meat and bread by ravens. That takes a lot of faith, doesn't it? Sometime later, however, the brook dries up, and so Elijah must move to another place, a place where God will provide. He arrives in this Gentile, non-Jewish village, and here meets a starving woman. Her husband has already passed away and now she's there at the village gate gathering sticks. She's about to make a final mealing for herself and her son, the son that she loves, before they both lay down to die. It's a really desperate situation and sadly we know that many people in the world today are still hungry, many still face famine many are dying. Elijah believes that God cares about him and that he cares about this woman and her young son. And so he boldly asks an almost impossible request. Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? And she responds, she goes willingly to get it. But as she does so, he makes a further request and bring me, please, a piece of bread. He tells her that God will provide and that there will be enough for them. As she faces the worst of situations, Elijah encourages her to take a step of faith, to bake some bread for him first, and then to make something for herself and her boy. Now the woman is living in a country where the pagan god called Baal is worshipped. She would have been considered to be outside the circle of God's love and not open to faith in him. But as this woman listens, she believes and she takes an incredible step of faith. For as she begins to use the little flour and the little oil that she has, a miracle takes place. The flour does not get used up and the oil 
does not run dry. And it becomes a daily miracle, a provision of enough until the day when the rains returned to nourish the land. Now things are looking good. And then sometime later, the widow's son unexpectedly dies. And in her grief, she turns against Elijah. It's another challenge that demands a step of faith for him. And taking the dead body from her arms, he turns to God in prayer. He shares her pain at this tragedy and cries out to God, O oh Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. Prayer is answered. The boy is miraculously restored. The widow has given back her only son and she becomes convinced of the truth of God's word. We are of course living in a very different world to Elijah and the widow but we all know that situations of challenge do come our way. Those times when we are given the opportunity to respond with faith and trust in his provision for us, whatever the outcome. Perhaps also this week, we may have the opportunity to encourage someone else to trust him so that they too are led into a new or a deeper experience of knowing Jesus. I'm grateful today that we serve a great God. He is kind. He is loving. He is merciful. And whereas there are many things we still do not understand and will perhaps never understand, we are grateful that he knows us and is with us every step of the way. We're going to listen to some lovely music now for a time of reflection that reminds us that the Lord is gracious. And as we do that this morning, I invite you just to make your own prayers to him.
Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you today that you are so gracious and that your love is for all people everywhere. You are compassionate and you never fail those who put their faith in you. Help us this week, we pray, to step out in your promises and see you at work. And may our words and our lives be an encouragement to others to put their trust in you also. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. benediction is taken from Philippians chapter 4 verses 19 and 20. Some well-known words to many of us. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>